I want to start out by uh, welcoming everyone to Mount Zion Second Baptist. I serve uh, as the senior pastor of this church, of this body of believers. My name is Reverend Dr. Addison Kennedy, and I am thankful that we are able to open up uh, our church uh, to um, bring awareness and to share our sentiments about uh, the tragedies that we have uh, all seen for ourselves. And as uh, we are uh, a, a church house that welcomes uh, the brokenhearted, uh, we thought it was only right to do this, uh, to be able to share with the mother of uh, Brother Roger. And uh, we know uh, that at this time, uh, this is a tough time where she is trying to navigate grieving, uh, but she's also struggling because she's also having to fight for her child. Uh, as she shared with me in my office uh, how it is her instinctual capabilities to um, uh, defend her child. And one of the things that she shared with me also is that uh, if anyone is asking what can we do is love on your children, love on your babies, because she never thought this would happen to her. And so with that, I want to share a word of prayer, and then I'll bring up um, uh, my friend and my brother, Attorney Ben Crump. Let us pray. Dear God, we come to you now thanking you uh, for this day. God, we come to you brokenhearted, in need of your love, your peace, and even your hope, a hope that consumes us, hope that restores us because right now in this day and age it's hard to find hope mm. sometimes it's hard to find hope in our homes it's hard to find hope in grocery store movie theater it's hard to find hope even in houses of worship mm. so God we look to heaven for you to give us the hope that only you can provide. Now, God, we come to you now asking for you to wrap your arms around this grieving family, this grieving mother, knowing that you have the ability to give a peace that passes all understanding. We thank you now for the peace that is coming and the hope that is on the way. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen and amen. Let us welcome Attorney Ben Crump. Thank you so much, Reverend Kennedy, for allowing us to be in your cathedral for this important uh, press conference to give the reaction of what we found out on Friday late in the afternoon. Uh, I'm Attorney Ben Crump along with attorney Natalie Jackson and attorney Brian Barr of Levin Papantonia Law Firm, we have the honor of representing the family of Roger Fortson. We have present here with us his mother, Miss Mika Fortson, who will address you uh, in a few minutes. Uh, we also have present with us uh, Reverend Fernandez Anderson and uh, community activists here in Atlanta, Marcus Coleman. Mika also would like to thank, as always, her home pastor, Reverend Jamal Bryant and New Birth uh, Baptist Church, who have been standing with her every step of the way. Uh, he had his daughters graduating uh, from college, high school, or he would have been present by her side today too, so we can never say thank you enough to her new birth family. And also Mr. Fortson and her immediate family uh, who, they're just going through it. They're just going through it. And so Mika Fortson has always been clear to everybody from day one after she learned about this tragedy that she still can't believe. She still is in disbelief that her son is dead. 
But she has said from the beginning, Cliff Jones, that nobody is going to stain his reputation because so often they assassinate our children's character after they assassinate their person. That's right. And she has told everybody from Reverend Bryant, Attorney Jackson, me, uh, the sheriff to his face, Sheriff Aiden of the Okaloosa Sheriff's Department. She told the generals and the military, everybody, we cannot let them stain his name, his reputation, because he was too good of a person. And so she continues with this latest news of the termination to say there still appears to her to be an effort to stain his name. So that's where we start. As we said when we first found the news out that this is a step forward, Deputy Duran, the law enforcement officer who shot and killed senior airman Roger Fortson while he was in his own apartment. It's a step forward. As the sheriff said after the investigation that it was not objectively reasonable for him to shoot and kill senior airman Roger Fultzen. And you look at the video. Look at the video for yourself. And he executed him within a matter of seconds of him merely opening the door. He was a licensed registered gun owner right. in the state of Florida of all places that promotes the Second Amendment. Right. He was militarily trained to use a gun. He was responsible. He respected law enforcement. He respected authority. He was special ops. He was an American patriot. Mm -hmm. He had every right to the constitutional guarantees that every American citizen had. And so he had a constitutional right to have his registered gun as a registered gun owner. And when you look at the video, he kept it in the down position. Right. He never raised that gun. He didn't even have his finger on the trigger. Right. And he was trying to comply with the officer the whole time. Even after he shot him six times, point blank range, without giving any verbal command to drop the weapon. It was while Roger was on the ground dying, he was still trying to comply with the police officer's commands. The police officer said, drop your weapon, and Roger's on the ground saying, I don't have it. The gun is over there. And he said, I can't breathe. This is still incredibly painful. Incredibly painful. This is extremely emotional. Um, so I'm going to try to finish my comments so you can hear from Ms. Fortson, and then we will move on. Um, and so as Mika Fortson told me and Attorney Jackson that this officer is lying when you look at that report, and he tries to say that Roger moved his arm and what was it, Natalie? Some. He was upset. Huh? He attempted to take a step. He he was had aggression in it, aggression in his eyes, and he attempted to 
take a step towards him and was, so what was the arm? His arm was bent or so elbow was yeah. bent, yeah. canted. I mean, you look at the video for yourself. You look at the video for yourself. His mother, Mika Fortson, said he's still trying to stain his reputation, trying to act like he did something to justify him killing him. And there is no justification in doing so. And so even though it is a step forward with him being terminated, we are still calling on the Florida Department of Law Enforcement to bring criminal charges because this wasn't mere negligence. This was criminal. And he should be held accountable. And finally, as Mika said, as only a, a mother could say, she said, Attorney Crump, this isn't fair. This isn't fair. He got a slap on the wrist, but he still has his credentials. He still have his pension. He can go to another police department and get another job. He gets to go home and see his family. Roger never gets to come home. She has to go to the cemetery to see her baby. It isn't fair, she said. It just isn't fair. In fact, she's going to tell you where she was at when she got the call that he was being terminated. And so this is extremely emotional, as you all have witnessed here um, this morning. But she's going to do her best, as Reverend Kennedy uh, said, to continue to defend her child, especially his legacy, and not let anybody stain his reputation. He was an American patriot, and as the report found, there was nothing he did to cause this police officer to be justified in shooting and executing him. Nothing he did. He committed no crime. Now you're going to hear from his mother, Miss Mika Fortson. Mika, take your time, baby. <clears throat> Everybody want my reaction to how I feel about him being fired. First of all, since my son was murdered, I never looked at it in videos, and I didn't even read the report that they put out. Everything came to me as my family read it or a friend read it. I was at Lincoln Cemetery finishing his plat to go on his mausoleum space when I got the call. Um, that's not justice for me. It's so many lies in that report. It's so much left out in that report. When we did a press release, <clears throat> they had a picture up of my baby. Roger is left-handed. Roger gun was in his right hand pointed down. I put so many pictures of my baby on social media. It would never be aggression in his eyes if he wanted to. Roger was helping me raise his 16-year-old brother. He don't, he don't know how to put aggression in his eyes. That, no, I don't feel like that was justice. Y'all still staining his record. He's living. Why do he still have his credentials? Why do he still have his pension? You took a whole month to fire him because you waited for him to get another job so it won't be on his resume that he got fired from the police department. He resigned and came back. Let's be clear. Don't let this gold teeth fool you guys. I'm not dumb. I do my homework. One thing we say, if you the smartest person in your circle, get a different circle. I'm not the smartest person in my circle. Mm -hmm. 
I want justice for my child. You're not going to throw me a bone. Mm -hmm. Take his credentials. Take his pension. Let the world know why he, would, he resigned and came back. Break up charges against him. He thought he wasn't going to make it home to his family. Guess what? This one did it. That was his sister's birthday weekend. He was full, fully dressed. That means he was on the way out the door to us, but he didn't make it. You had military training, so you know what body movement means. I got five kids. When I go to the school, when they get in trouble, I tell them, watch your body, watch your body language. They don't have to say nothing, but the way they move, I can tell them if they disrespect one of their teachers. Let's be clear. That is not justice. That's you thinking you throwing me a bone and I'm okay with it. I'm not okay with it. Amen. I'm not okay with it. And the fact that everybody keeps saying that my son was on the floor begging them to help him, and you think I'm going to be okay with what you guys did? No. Mm -hmm. I'm not okay with that. And to be honest with you, he wasn't begging you. He was still fighting for us. Like he told me when he was in Kuwait, he didn't die because he was fighting to get back to Hun Harmony and Andre. Mm. You and the lady that came in behind you had time to call the ambulance to get him help. But you tried to cover up your mistake, so you let him lay there and die. That's not justice for my child. I want justice. I, I put everybody out the house every day to make my house dark. To pray that his ghost will come in and just tell me bye. So you think it's justice? There will never be justice for taking my baby. Ladies and gentlemen, obviously, this is so emotional and devastating for his family. Full justice would be him being charged for the killing of senior airman Roger Fortson. That's what his mother wants. That's what his family wants. They want full justice. They don't want partial justice. They don't want three quarters justice. Roger was an American patriot. And we respect American patriots. You took Roger from the world, not just us. And we want full justice. Again, the termination was the first step, but we continue our fervent call for FDLE to bring charges in this matter for Deputy Duran shooting and killing Senior Airman Roger Fortson, an American patriot. At this time, we will try to take some of your questions if you have any. Mr. Trump, I want to be clear. You telling me this officer was able to resign, go to work somewhere else. Yeah. We, we don't know if he's going to work somewhere else, but what we have seen in the past is when officers have used excessive force, um, especially what we've seen when they've killed uh, minorities, they will be allowed to resign, they will keep their credentials, they will keep their pension, and then they move to another uh, police department or a law enforcement agency. That was the case with Tamir Rice and many others who uh, 